So it's finally here, we've waited about six years but at long last Tears of the Kingdom has come out on the Nintendo Switch and so far let me tell you it is great. I got the game yesterday on release day, so far I've been playing for probably about five hours, I've, had, I've not been at work, I've had the day off but I've had other stuff going on so I've probably played for about five hours and I just wanted to do a quick video on sort of my first impressions of the game and let you know what I think. I've recorded about the first two hours of gameplay, I won't show anything further than that because I don't want to spoil anything and it, similarly I won't really talk about the story because I don't want to spoil that either so you know don't be afraid that I'm going to just tell you everything that happens in the plot, I'm not. The only thing I'll say just to set up the scene is that this, the game starts with Link and Zelda investigating something, it kind of all goes wrong, Zelda disappears and Link wakes up uh, some time later, you're not really sure how long later. So it's very Breath of the Wild in that sense, the game starts in a very similar way to Breath of the Wild with Link having woken up, you know, Hyrule has changed from how he remembers it, it's changed to how you remember it from the previous game and you go about exploring all over again. While we're talking about story though, I do just want to say that I am really intrigued by it so far. Breath of the Wild didn't have too much story to, to sort of like sink your teeth into, but so far Tears of the Kingdom seems to have a bit of more of a focus on that, which I really like. You know, for me, I like having a good story in video games, it pulls me through. And so far Tears of the Kingdom does seem to have some intrigue around it. I'm interested to find out what's going on. There's this ancient civilization that's brought up at the very start, which I want to know more about. I want to know what's going on with certain characters. So far though, yeah, I think they've done a really good job of getting me interested in the story in a way that Breath of the Wild didn't do so much. That's a really positive thing for me. So talking about those first five hours of gameplay, Tears of the Kingdom has its own version of the Great Plateau from Breath of the Wild, which was sort of the tutorial area of the game. It's got its own version, it's called the Great Sky Island. But don't worry, even though it's similar, it's not the same and it is different enough that you don't feel like it's retreading ground. It just sort of feels like they're continuing on that tradition of introducing you into the game in this sort of wonderful way where you explore this area and you get to learn all these new mechanics. These sky islands look incredible, I really think they do. They're very scenic and I've always liked games where there's a concept of going up into the sky, you know, Bioshock Infinite. And so I was sort of immediately drawn in at the start because of this, because you're in the sky. And it's full of neat little details as well. So islands with water on, but the water's not contained. They sort of have waterfall off the edge of the island, things like that. And at one point I actually thought that the graphics were kind of bugging out because the game looked a little bit weird, like the colors seemed to be off. But actually I realized after a minute that in fact, there was a cloud that had rolled over the island that I was on and I was in fact standing inside a cloud. And after a minute, the cloud sort of blew on by and everything went back to normal. But just, you know, just, just that little detail impressed me even more. As I said, it serves as pretty much the tutorial of the game. It's, it's quite long, it's longer than I thought it would be, but it serves as a tutorial of the game. It introduces you to new mechanics. You sort of get your first weapons as well. Uh, picking up, you know, sticks and wooden shields and things like that, using them as weapons. Uh, was a great feeling, it sort of had that new beginning feeling but it was familiar at the same time, similar to how you start Breath of the Wild with just the very basic weapons. And then once you've sort of got a few basic weapons, the game introduces you to these new mechanics one by one and that's what I'm going to talk about now. I'm going to start with the mechanic that I think you'll use the most and that's Ultra Hand. This mechanic allows you to manipulate objects, similar to how in Breath of the Wild you can manipulate metal objects with Magnesis, but this lets you manipulate any type of object made of any material, wood, you know, that kind of thing is absolutely fine. It allows you to lift objects, rotate them, place them elsewhere, but also you can stick objects together. And this really is where the creativity of the game is going to come in play for you. Using this, you're able to combine not as useful objects, things like logs, you can combine them together, add things on top, and you can turn them into more useful things. So for example, in one of the gameplay trailers, they combine a few logs and a sail to make a boat. That kind of thing is where you sort of start learning. If you're a bit worried about, you know, you don't feel like you're very creative, I don't really think you do have to worry about it because the game sort of guides you into the types of things that it wants you to build and the kind of things that you need to build in order to progress. So in the early stages, it sort of shows you a boat that can sail across some water that you couldn't get across because you don't have enough stamina to swim all the way across. 
So as I say, I don't think you need to worry if you don't think you're very creative, but if you think you are very creative, I think there's gonna be loads to do with this mechanic. Building mechanics are not new to games, but I think this one does feel kind of different, and I'm really excited to see what kind of things people come up with. I've just started with some very, very basic things. I probably won't do anything too crazy, but I think that this is the kind of game where you'll just see some amazing creations from people much, much, much cleverer than me. I will just very quickly say that the controls for rotating objects in the air were a little confusing at first, but once you sort of get the hang of it after you a couple of tries then you're away and it's absolutely fine but just sort of like watch out for that if they're a bit confusing at first then don't worry you will get the hang of it I'm, I'm sure you will so the next mechanic that you learn is called fuse it allows you to take weapons and fuse components onto them so an example of this is you can find some spikes around in the world you can stick spikes onto your shield or you can fuse things to your weapons so for example a boulder onto a great sword and then it becomes sort of like a big hammer type weapon or finally if you kill some keys and you pick up their wings and their eyes you can fuse these components with arrows so the wings fused with arrows makes them fly further or the eyes fused with the arrows makes them home in on creatures that you're aiming for it is a good mechanic i do like it but it can leave link looking a bit silly so there are a few weapons that when you fuse them together they just look massive when they're on link's back and they've sort of sacrificed that look for you know the core mechanic and the fun in the gameplay which i do understand but i i've sort of strayed away a little bit from fusing too many big things together just because i think it looks silly and also i sort of prefer to control your standard sword anyway than you know a giant hammer that you're swinging around i'm sure i've only scratched the surface of the game so i'm sure there's a lot more to the mechanics it's not really a complaint but just i think link can look a bit silly sometimes one really neat thing about this mechanic though is that one time i was fighting an enemy and he, that enemy held up its own weapon and then fused something onto it that was lying on the ground around. So enemies can fuse their weapons as well. And I really, really like this. I remember seeing it in the trailer, but then I'd forgotten it until it happened. So it was a bit of a surprise to me. And I think it's really good. It makes the enemies harder to fight. And it also adds some more variety. And you know, enemy variety is always a good thing in games. And I'm hoping that down the line, we're gonna see some really scary fused weapons that some enemy monsters have and they're gonna be some really tough fights. Some of the fights are already quite difficult. I, I have died a couple of times. I think it is a bit more of a challenge than Breath of the Wild so far, but we'll see how that progresses as I go through the game further. Two more mechanics there now. One of them is Ascend, which sort of lets you jump up and ascend through whatever ceiling it is that's above you and you come out on the floor on the level above. And the last one is Recall, which reverses the path of whatever object you choose to use the ability on. So, you know, if there's a boulder that's rolling down a hill towards you, then you can use Recall and it shoots it back up the hill. I haven't really had too much time using both of these, but I think they both seem pretty neat. And especially Recall, I've got a feeling there'll be a lot of puzzles that use this ability throughout the game. I, th I think that's what it's gonna be used for the most. So like I said, the start of the game is pretty much uh, a big, one big playground tutorial. And it does, a, I think, a very good job of teaching you how all these new mechanics work. You know, you very quickly learn, like I said, that fusing a boulder and a sword makes this hammer, and then you can use that hammer to smash through certain rocks. Or similarly, you learn that using recall, for example, it can reverse the direction of objects that are floating down water. And to be honest, I think the whole tutorial area just generally does a good job. It also reteaches you some of the old Breath of the Wild mechanics, so things like temperature, and cooking and I think the whole area is designed really really well you learn everything pretty quickly but you do it in a way that it doesn't really feel like you're spoon fed some of the things sort of happen organically it sort of nudges you into figuring things out for yourself and I think that's a really good way of doing it it, it definitely doesn't feel like the tutorials of some games where it just is a list of instructions it feels much more organic and I definitely appreciated that finally once you complete the tutorial you go through some more story you eventually get access to Hyrule properly and you jump down from the Sky Island and falling from the sky is every bit as epic to control in game as it looks in the trailer. I'm really hoping that the game gives you a lot of reasons to go back up to the Sky Islands and then come down. I think transitioning between the two is going to be lots of fun. To be honest, just falling through the air and looking around Hyrule, you can see everything in the distance just looking around it feels incredible. At least I think it was awesome anyway. I mean, try it for yourself and, and let me know what you think of it too. And then once you're down in Hyrule, sort of similar to Breath of the Wild, the game really, really opens up. You do a tiny bit of story and then the objectives open up and you can choose different directions to go in. Similar to how Breath of the Wild had four main objectives that you go through, I've been given four objectives that I can choose between. I've not got that far yet, you know, I've sort of been looking around the world. Hyrule itself is familiar, but it's different enough that it's still really interesting to explore and to see 
the changes and see how the different landmarks have changed and you know the castle's always floating in the sky and new bases have popped up and things like that it's so it's really interesting to explore again and once you're down on Hyrule properly then you also start to see some familiar faces as well which is really nice to see something else that I wanted to highlight quickly there seems to be a bigger focus on voice acting in this game I don't really remember Breath of the Wild having much or any voice acting at all but there's been quite a bit so far in Tears of the Kingdom that is voice acted which I really like I've said it before but when it comes to games I'm a big story guy and I personally think that story comes across better when it's voice acted so I really appreciate that there's been a fair bit of voice acting so far and I really hope that there's more voice acting and it continues throughout the game Okay, so I just want to quickly touch on the performance of the game. I think you can really tell that this game is pushing the Switch to the limits, really, you know. It's about as much as a game can really get out of that device, I think. It is pretty old at this point, you know, six years, and, you know, it was it was kind of old technology even when it came out, so I think they've pushed it as far as they can. Visually, it does look good. It's still stylized, and it doesn't look too different to Breath of the Wild. There's a couple of times where I think, oh, it does look noticeably better than Breath of the Wild, but on the whole, it looks very similar. That on the whole, it's not really an issue, it doesn't take away anything from the game to me anyway, but it does make me think about what could happen with a more powerful console. I read that Monolith Soft got involved with Nintendo in the making of this game, and I just can't help but imagine what those two developers working together could do with a more powerful console. You know, something something with the power of a PS5, for example, or an Xbox Series X. Imagine a game like this running on something like that, and just what direction they would be able to take it is something that I, I would always wonder about. Frame rate wise, it feels like it's 6 to 30 most of the time, it does drop sometimes substantially at certain points of the game so for example if you're building something big using ultra hand then i've noticed that it can slow down a fair bit then and you know just if there's lots of effects on the screen it can drop then and it can feel a little bit bad but it's not too bad what i have found is that honestly after a while i sort of stopped noticing it and i and i also stopped caring i was just happy to be playing tears of the kingdom i was running around having fun so i just stopped noticing and i kind of let those things go but i just wanted to make you aware that it, it's it's definitely not 60 it is 30 most of the time and it sometimes drops below that but really like i said it is just great to be playing the game there have been moments when it's had me grinning while playing i've just been really having a great time running around exploring new places using the new mechanics and really getting into the story as well i've just been having a great time with it it really is sort of like an upgrade to breath of the wild a breath of the wild 2.0 i suppose if you want I, and, and i can imagine in five years we'll still be discovering secrets in this game you know sort of like we were with breath of the wild Obviously it's early days to say this, I've barely scratched the surface and there's still plenty of the year left but it would not surprise me at all if this was up for game of the year and even won it. And I think if you liked Breath of the Wild even a little bit then you owe it to yourself to play this game and have a go and see what you think of it. So those were my thoughts on Tears of the Kingdom. I'm really glad to finally have this game in our hands. I'm going to play it all weekend, I think, and all week and probably even further into that. I'd really like to know what you guys think, though. Have you been playing it a lot? What are your likes? What are your dislikes? Have you put loads of time into it so far? I'd quite like to do some more videos on Tears of the Kingdom. So if you did enjoy this one, then please do subscribe so you can see when those come up. We're getting closer to 1000 subscribers, which is great. I'd love to get there. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Now I'm off to play some more Tears of the Kingdom. Mm -hmm.